do pick up reading, chances are they never become good spellers, maybe horrible spellers actually. Um, so I don't, you don't really outgrow dyslexia. Just you learn how to adjust here. You learn how to manage it. Okay. Um, chance, even people who are very well remediated often are slow readers. So this is where t really great text readers come in handy so that the, for long assignments, you know, um, the, 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 the texts are digitized and people listen and read on the, on the screen. It just isn't as tiring, but you know. Yes. When would you introduce assistive technology? That's a good question. Uh, I would try very hard in the first four to five, you know, through grade five or so, to um, to really, you know, develop good independent reading skills and to remediate. There isn't a right or wrong answer. There's a point at which you have to decide that as the older the child gets, I think, I like to think of it as, okay, if we were at 100% remediation up through grade four now, should we have maybe 25%, you know, accommodation technology and maybe 75? You can do them both. In fact, the older people get, um, assist, you know, having text readers and voice recognition support the phonetic, the alphabetic principle, basically. Um, in fact, <coughs> I've known students who learn to read by dictating into Dragon Naturally Speaking and seeing the words come up, you know, on the. And there's a there is a group of student there's a group of people for whom that actually is extremely helpful. Um, and we have little studies that document that we don't have a really big, you know, definitive study. My observation in working with many students with, assist, with text readers and voice recognition is that they, they benefit a lot from it, and particularly they benefit from exposure to text. So I guess I would start thinking about it, you know, when you feel like you've got a child with intellectual curiosity who needs to be able to read more than they can read independently, there's nothing wrong with books on CD, there's nothing wrong with scanned books that they can read and listen to at all. So I wouldn't be afraid of that. People say, ooh, will they really want to read? Mm -hmm. Yes, they will. Well, the other thing we did is we, we got our son a nook, just a small nook, mm -hmm. and you're able to enlarge the font. Yes. And so he can track easier and he can, you know, sometimes we take a break, he can always find his Yep. place again yep. Yep. and then when he's doing independent reading they don't know if he's got a big book a little book I mean there's that whole that's true you know when everyone was bringing and the Hunger yes. Games couldn't do right. that but nobody knew because yeah. if it was big or thick but that that was another thing that was yeah and you could you borrow know, so you much from the library so I, I, I read I read things about I repeat there are people who really criticize e-readers and this and that you know more screens I don't know I think that I think that digital text provides a lot of advantages to students. They're reading, um, you can, you know, again, like if the, if the book is, if the publisher allows it, um, you know, <coughs> often, there, there's often a text-to-speech function in the Kindle or the Nook or whatever, you know, um, but people, actors who read books are terribly afraid that people will prefer robotic voices that come with e-readers. So they have, you know, they prevent a lot of, you know, they have limits on, on what can be, you know, on what the text-to-speech function. It's crazy. Um, but anyway, um, so I, I, you know, I think that's, I think th those, are, those are great. I personally love e-readers. I, you know, so, um, and I... I think it, you know, I think it provides a lot of, you can read novels, you can do deep reading, you can read textbooks, I think there's good potential there, definitely, yeah. Do you think um, that the assistive technology is um, extra beneficial to kids with also to have, besides from the, for, aside from dyslexia, ADHD? Yeah, I think, again, it's an individual thing, connection. but I, I think a lot of people uh, that I'm, students that I've worked with, especially when they have to focus, find that it's a little easier to focus and track. And, you know, there are also some of the more advanced text readers and text language, uh, 
you know, kind of whole reading and writing systems like Kurzweil 3000 have study skills, toolbars, and note taking, temp, you know, you can extract, you can do all kinds of things that a higher level student needs to do. In fact, I teach a, a high school study skills and reading comprehension class in the summer for high school students, and we, we use, they do it on Kurzweil. Even if they can read fine, I still want them to learn it because it's, it's, really, it's a really, really great um, product. Yes? So when you have a child who's diagnosed pretty early and going through remediation, um, how often would you, do you recommend having them tested to make sure they're actually on track and that they're going to be able to catch up on that? Well, there's, there's different kinds of testing. Um, in any, any good uh, reading teacher or tutor will, uh, will do ongoing progress monitoring. Um, you know, I do it when I'm working with students practically every day just to get, you know, just to get a sort of like putting a dipstick in. And then there are, you know, you can do periodic checks like with the gray oral or the gray silent reading test. The big psychoeducational, you know, testing like with the IQ test and the achievement test, whatever it is, that probably ought to be done more like every three years or so because that's a formal documentation. Although you can give, you know, isolated stuff, but they're not that great. There are better reading tests that you can give more frequently just to see how things are going that are standardized and so on. Yes? So do you see a lot of children that will perhaps start in school, like say Growth Academy, and then get to up to grade level and then jump back into yes. the public? Yes, definitely. Do they typically come and then stay through and even know to go to high school? It does. Um, a lot of our children, you know, we're in business to try and catch students up so they can go into a mainstream set setting. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on the child, they may not go back to a big public school system. They might go to a smaller private school or parochial school or something like that. But no, yeah. And then we have a few who, you know, do stay with us a long time. But people send their children to Groves for different reasons at different times. I think the, the most common reason that people put their children in a lower school here is to learn to read well because their kids are having trouble. Um, middle school, it might be reading and writing. It might also have some, you know, ADHD that's interfering with their learning. Upper school, it's less reading and language and more uh, ADHD, executive function, you know, having trouble with the higher analytical learning and stuff. So it really, they're kind of different, people have different objectives for putting their children in our school at different times. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate your being here and um, hope you found it information. <laughs> 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 <laughs>